Hi folks, I'm Josh. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to take a little time and show you how I make these little monsters out of a small block of wood. Um, I just use scrap wood and uh, they turn out pretty fun, have a lot of little personality and my, my two boys really like to play with them. So um, we'll take a little time and show how I do it. What I have started here is a selection of small wooden cubes. Uh, the wood is just from offcuts and scraps um, that I've had laying around. These happen to be uh, walnut and these are beech. So these are not perfect cubes. They are, they're not by any means perfect and they don't really need to be. Uh, maybe just kind of close uh, because it's kind of fun if when they're done you can stack them um, and play with them that way a little bit. But these are good enough that it's fine. As far as size, they're about an inch across this one's a little over that way and yeah they're about an inch cubed give or take and uh, so that's fun so as far as layout goes um, some you just kind of want to think about you know you want one leg you want four or one leg you want two legs or four legs where you want the mouth to be where you want the eyes to be these guys are pretty small so you don't got a lot of room to work with of course and so this will be his face we'll put a couple and this is just rough markings to kind of give me an idea of what I'm going to do. So there'll be a drill hole here. This will be his mouth that I'll probably cut through. And I'm sure I'm not lined up, but it's close. Um, and then leg-wise, let's give him, oh, I don't know. Let's say, let's do four legs on this guy. Now this you probably want to try to measure a little bit. So I'm just going to set my uh, ruler here like that. Yeah. So we're just kind of eyeballing here. But this will be nice to have an actual mark um, that is consistent because I will use this over on the table saw as my guide to make sure that I'm even coloring your waist there. So make marks on probably all sides so that I can use whatever side I want when I'm over at the saw. Right, so you can kind of see what I'm thinking for that guy. We got eyes, mouth, one hole. Well, and when I cut that through on the table saw, which we'll do and I'll show you how that works. This will get cut out. And this will get cut out, which will then leave me with one, two, three, four legs for him to stand on. He'll be a little four-legged dude. So that'll be good for that guy. And then, uh, you know, just kind of go from there. I skipped a good bit of the layout for you just to spare you the boring bits. But here you can see I have all six of them with some layout ideas, some design, whatever you want to call it. So, um, the next thing that I like to do after I kind of get them laid out that way is I cut the legs because that'll kind of give me an idea as I go how to adjust uh, sizes for the eyes and maybe placement a little bit if things are looking like it's going to be too thin or something like that. So uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll go over to, I actually do this on the table saw with my, um, uh, my sled. Something to bear in mind is if you need to clean out the bottoms, you should pick a size that you have a chisel that fits. So like if you have to smooth out the, the bottoms of those after they have been, rather than having to do all that with sandpaper, you could do it with a chisel. So you may want to check to see how big your smallest chisel is. Um, my most readily available chisel is that guy. And so he'll fit in most of those just fine. The only one he probably won't fit in is the narrow, tall leg guy. I'll have to maybe get a little more creative with that. I have a smaller chisel somewhere, but uh, this is a quarter inch one that I use most frequently to do that kind of thing. So uh, bear that in mind. How wide are your legs going to be in the holes for the legs? Uh, and pick a uh, space big enough in there so that your chisel will, chisel will fit. Over to the table saw. Alright, so the first thing to do on the saw is, for me, I use my miter sled, um, is adjust the blade height. Um, so all the legs on these guys, I'm going to have the same uh, length, really, because I'll set the blade height for all of them except one, the one guy that had the, the longer legs, and 
I'll have to go a little bit higher on him. So the rest of them though, I'll do all the leg cutting with one blade height to save time. So I just eyeball, get the blade there, and I want her a little shallower, something about like that, which will be about what I drew on most of these guys. So that should be good to go. Um, then when it's time to cut, I will, um, I like to use a pencil. That's what I use to hold the guys down. I'll actually use two, one on each side. All of these will take probably two passes. This is an eighth inch blade. Um, and so I'll have to cut the left side, then the right side, and then I'll have to clean them up afterwards. So I will uh, put my mask on and turn on the dust collector and cut those quick. The last little bit that I want to do on the table saw with these guys is I want to cut the mouth on this particular one. I want the mouth to go all the way around on him. Um, but I see what that looks like when we're done. So I don't need any other table saw work on the rest of them. I'll still do with bandsaw and stuff like that. So uh, we'll cut him out with a pretty shallow cut all the way around. I've got all the legs cut out on these guys. We'll go in and clean up those cuts with a chisel in a little bit. But before we do that, the next thing I want to do is... Um, drill through so the mouths are a hole drilled all the way through you can see on these guys that I have a mouth drawn on um, drill a hole there all the way through and then what I do is I cut in with the bandsaw um, to meet that hole and that's kind of what creates the mouth um, so I could drill the eyes also at this step but I like to get the mouths finished first so I know how much wood I'm working with for the eyes before I pick a size for the eye holes. So um, I will drill all the mouths over at the drill press right now. Drill bit size, oh I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter inch or so. Um, yeah, probably about that size. Quarter inch will probably do, and I'll probably do that on all of them. Uh, that's Forstner bit. You could use pretty much anything. That's just what I got on hand here, so we're going to use that guy. The next step is to cut the mouth holes on the bandsaw, cut two of the mouth holes on the bandsaw, uh, which will probably take two cuts, one at the bottom that will meet the bottom of the hole and then one a little bit higher. Um, I like to make it so that the circles for the mouth hole at the back are kind of on the top of that slit. Um, I think it makes them look like they're happy and smiling. Um, if, if you want them to look more angry or sad, you can adjust where the slit is relative to the hole. Um, it actually kind of makes a, it's funny how much you feel like that changes their attitudes. So, to the bandsaw. Next step is to drill holes for eyes and things like that. So um, mostly I'll be using an eighth inch drill bit for the eyes, uh, just in a hand drill here. Uh, and I got a little tape on there marked so that I don't go too deep. You want to be careful in some of them, like this guy, that if you drill too deep at the wrong angle or whatever, you may come out into the mouth and that just looks a little strange. Um, so like I said, mostly eighth inch bits on these guys, except maybe my Cyclops here, probably use a uh, quarter inch and on this guy that's kind of got like little nostril holes here I got an even smaller little bit and I definitely have to be careful to not go all the way through and then I'll use the eighth inch on the sides for his eyes over there so um, I will do a little bit of marking and measuring just to get kind of close I'm not gonna be super precise but you know I want it to be a little bit more accurate than just straight eyeballing it Now it's time to clean up the um, cuts from the table saw. As you can see, 
inside of there it's not super clean particularly on the bottoms I like those to be nice and flat so um, main tools here are going to be that's a quarter inch chisel uh, that's good and shaving sharp and then this is an even smaller I don't know, chisel from a little carving kit I think it's maybe about an eighth inch or so um, a couple of the cuts are too small for the quarter inch so um, all I'm going to use is this um, well it was a bench hook once that I modified to do some other work that's why it's got that weird curve over there but here it's square and flush so we will uh, use this space here for our for our cleaning well now I got the bottoms cleaned up pretty well so I can um, do a little bit of hand sanding now to clean up all around the mouths and things like that um, uh, then we'll take them over to the belt sander and hit all six sides just briefly um, to smooth them down a little bit take off pencil marks things like that um, and then we will go from there so do a little hand sanding all I have is just a piece of 220 grit sandpaper it's kind of my go-to for everything it seems um, and I'll just fold it in half and put it in the mouth like that and give it a little bit of work. And to clean up the mouths on the little monsters, uh, just take that 220 that's kind of stiff. If it's not stiff, you can grab like a small, oh, I have a bunch of old, these are bamboo skewers. Um, that were uh, super cheap. You could wrap around those, uh, whatever works, whatever you have that um, will get that sandpaper small enough, but still rigid enough to be useful. But rolling it seems to work for me. So I just roll that up and put it, kind of twist it a little bit, get it in the mouth, and send it through a little bit. And that's just to clean up the inside. Time to take them over to the belt sander and hit all the outsides. Well, somehow I lost a little bit of video to some corruption, um, and the video was explaining the or showing the little bit of um, drilling that was done to make holes for the little embellishments that are on these guys, this little horn and maybe these and tusk and uh, oh, this guy's tail and that kind of stuff, his nose. Um, nothing real fancy, not a huge loss. All I did is just take some cut off some old dowels that I had and uh, size them to some drill bits so that I had the closest fit possible. Drill some shallow holes and uh, did it with just a hand drill. So um, sorry we lost the video, but I think it's simple enough that you get the idea. Now it's time to fit the dowels to the holes um, and cut them to size. So I, you kind of got to do all these individually because I don't drill all the holes super precise. So make sure that the bottom of your dowel is square. Get her in there and then decide how long you want it to be. I'm not going to go super long here because um, I want it to just be a little nub sticking up out of the top of his head. And I'll go cut that. The cyclops horn has been cut to length. Now all I gotta do is just give it a little bit of sanding around the top edge. All right, now she's ready to go in. A Little bit of wood glue, nothing too crazy. And then give them a little clamp for overnight. Clamp is obviously overkill, but that's what I got. So anyway, clamp him in there. Be careful you don't squeeze too tight. You can break. You have a little bit of a weak spot here. You could snap it. Um, probably not going to happen with the way this is clamped, but some of the other situations you might run into. Uh, so anyway, that one's ready to sit. 
and we'll do a few more. We removed the clamps from all the guys, and you can kind of see they're looking pretty good. That one's probably my favorite. There's only two things left to do, really. Uh, the first thing I want to do is um, add uh, my little mark on the bottom of them. I just use a wood burner for that and then also to finish them. So the last thing we have to do is put a little finish on them. My finish of choice is this guy, Mahoney's Finishes Oil wax finish. Uh, it says here it's a blend of beeswax, carnauba wax, and walnut oil. Um, I like this. It's food safe. It's natural. Uh, it doesn't have anything weird in it. You could eat it if you wanted to. Um, I mean, you know, some people use walnut oil as a, uh, as a salad dressing, so it, it's pretty good stuff, uh, and it's safe. Uh, the way this guy goes on, I just use a soft cloth, and you just kind of gob it on to start with and then you can kind of um, get a little more the, what it tells you to do is to, to put it on liberally and then buff it later after an hour or so so that's kind of what I'll do I'll put it on and then later I'll go back and rub it real hard with a cloth or something the only trick is getting inside the creases and inside the mouth and things like that um, some of the drill holes for the eyes and whatnot I just kind of do my best it's really not all that pivotal. Some of the more tricky spots, I sometimes throw it in the vise, which you can't see because it's out of frame. Throw it in the vise, fold the rag in half, and kind of get in there like that. In a couple of hours so the oils had time to and the wax really has had time to kind of set so now all I gotta do is just remove any excess with a little cloth give it a little polish and then they are ready to go so here they are in all their little monstery glory you can see they're all a nice little shine to them, but not too shiny, so that maybe they wouldn't, um, you don't want them too slippery, you don't want them to, like, not stack and stuff like that, so, they look pretty good, I'm happy with how they turned out. Oop, that one's got a little chip on his corner there, I didn't notice, we'll have to smooth that out a little. So, last thing to do is take them to the boys and see if they play with them.